It was late evening, very dark, but Diane knew the path leading through the dense forest like the back of her hand. Diane had spent a lot of time in this forest with her grandmother, who took her orphaned granddaughter with her everywhere when she was little. The forest fed them. There they picked mushrooms, berries, and herbs. They sold some and exchanged some for other products. There was a swamp in this forest, which had a bad reputation with the locals. It was believed that a young woman had once drowned herself in it because of unrequited love. Her fiancé broke up with her on the eve of their wedding, so she just went off the path and dived headlong into the swamp. Diane didn't really believe it to be true, but now that she was in the same position as the woman from the legend, she couldn't help but think about it. Diane wanted to hide from everyone, fall to the ground like a wounded beast, and howl at the top of her lungs. Despite the darkness, her legs confidently carried her down the familiar path. Soon, Diane found herself in that very ominous place. She sank to the ground, raised her head to the full moon, and howled with anguish. Suddenly, she heard a wolf howl in response. The sound was coming from the other side of the clearing. This instantly brought the woman back to her senses. She pressed herself to the ground and kept quiet. The wolf continued to howl at regular intervals, but no one answered the animal. Diane knew that if other wolves didn't respond to the lone wolf howl, it meant that the pack had abandoned the animal for some reason. A little later, Diane started hearing heavy breathing and whining. The woman decided that the animal had fallen into a trap, but this thought was immediately followed by a different one. Who would set traps here? Even hunters don't come near this swamp. The woman couldn't listen to the whining of the animal in pain. Then Diane suddenly thought it could be a dog that had fallen into the trap while chasing game. This theory seemed very plausible, so Diane started crawling slowly towards the source of the groaning and howling. Diane was a kind, sympathetic woman, but a little naive too. She could never pass by someone else's misfortune and was always ready to help anyone in need. She was crawling up to the suffering creature in the pitch darkness, but she didn't dare to stand up on her feet. All this time, the poor animal continued to moan and cry. Diane's heart was breaking for the poor creature. Finally, she reached the source of the sounds and could see the outstretched paws and ears pressed to the animal's head. In the light of the moon, the woman thought that it was a dog. How did you get here, you poor thing? The woman said, coming closer to the animal. She examined the dog for injuries, but couldn't see any. Then Diane noticed the animal's large, swollen belly. Having put her hand on it, Diane felt a strong push. So that's what's going on. You're giving birth. Well, you didn't choose the best place for it. Don't worry, I'll help you. Diane's grandmother wasn't a vet, but she knew a lot about animals. She loved them, took care of them, treated their illnesses and injuries, and helped them during labor if there was a need. Everyone in the area knew about it and often turned to her for help. And Diane inherited her talent. Be patient, it might hurt a little, she said to the dog, grabbed it by the base of the tail and stuck her hand into the birth canal. A minute later, Diane pulled out a rather large puppy that didn't seem to be breathing. Come on, come on now, the woman rubbed and massaged it. Finally, the furry lump made a squeaking sound. Good job, little one, the woman said and put the puppy under its mother's belly. After that, the labor went quickly. The dog calmed down, stopped whining, and started breathing evenly. When all the puppies were born, the dog looked at Diane, made a lingering sound, and licked her hand several times. The woman took it as gratitude. We need to move you, but I won't be able to take you all with me now. You stay here, and I'll come back for you in the morning. Having returned home, Diane realized that there was no trace of the pain that she'd been feeling over her breakup. She was calm and felt good. Her fiancé broke up with her a week before their wedding, just like it was with the woman from the legend. Diane's ex-fiancé's name was Alex. He was a local and they met in a store. After graduating from college in the city, the man decided to return to the village to live with his parents and continue his father's work in the carpentry workshop. He was Diane's first love, and it was a great love. The woman was head over heels for him. She was on cloud nine. Diane's grandmother, however, didn't want her to marry Alex. She believed that his family was cursed after Alex's great-grandfather forced himself on his son's wife. The poor woman got pregnant and had a child. 
Then she lost her mind and drowned herself in the swamp in the forest. So it wasn't the unrequited love that made her kill herself? But what does it have to do with Alex? He shouldn't be held responsible for the sins of his ancestors, Diane said. Her grandmother didn't interfere with the wedding. Diane was at Alex's house discussing final preparations for the wedding with his parents. There was a week left before the celebration. At that moment, someone knocked on the door. It was a woman with a child in her arms. She said that she had a relationship with Alex back when he was studying in the city and that it was his child. Alex lowered his eyes and mumbled something unintelligible under his breath. Diane silently got up and left. No one tried to stop her. No one tried to follow her. Thus, the woman ended up in the forest near the swamp, alone at night. When she returned home in the morning, her grandmother took one look at Diane and simply gave her a long hug without asking any questions. Diane told her grandmother about what had happened in the forest and asked her to help her get the dog with the puppies out of there as if nothing else had happened. Having arrived at the spot, Diane only saw one puppy in the clearing. Where's the mother and the rest of the puppies? There were eight of them, I think. Diane, gently put the puppy back down and don't make sudden movements. It wasn't a dog that you saved. The woman heard the restrained voice of her grandmother, who was standing a few meters away from her. Diane turned around in surprise and saw a huge she-wolf standing nearby. I, I won't harm your pups. I just wanted to help, Diane said in a timid voice, looking at the predator. The she-wolf stood still for a while, looking at Diane, and then she went straight for the woman. Diane held her breath and closed her eyes in fear. But what happened next was completely unexpected. The she-wolf approached Diane, sniffed her, and licked her hand several times then grabbed the last pup and went away. After walking for a few meters, the predator turned around and looked at the woman again. You are a good mother, the woman said to the animal at parting. Grandma, thanks to the she-wolf, I now know my calling, my purpose in life, Diane said later that day. I want to go to the city to study veterinary medicine, and then I'll open my own vet clinic. What I saw today, dear, you clearly have a gift, and I will do everything in my power to support you, the grandmother answered. She stroked her granddaughter on the head and gave her a kiss. Diane graduated from the university with honors. The teachers were sure that she was going to have a great future and even offered her to stay at the university as a teacher. But the young woman decided against it. She wanted to start working, to start helping animals. Her grandmother gave Diane all of her savings. Diane took out a bank loan and soon the clinic was up and running. The woman started working with several large farms. Rumors about the talented veterinarian quickly spread around the district, and Diane soon got private appointments too. Things were going great at the clinic. Meanwhile, Alex married the woman who showed up at his house with a child. They soon had a couple more children, all girls. Alex's mother loved her granddaughters, but his father was very disappointed. He wanted to have a grandson to inherit the family carpentry business. He was so sad about it, he even started abusing alcohol. One day, Alex was in town on business. It was late evening. His wife and mother were at home with the children. Suddenly, the women heard loud noises and swearing. Alex's father came home very drunk. The man had a gun over his shoulder. He went into the living room where the women were and started unbuttoning his pants. What are you doing and why do you have a gun? Alex's mother was indignant. I will make my own grandson since my son can't do it. The man screamed continuing to take off his pants. At that time, Diane was returning home from the clinic. Driving past Alex's house, the woman saw that the front door was open. She also saw two scared women trying to run away from Alex's father, who was armed and wasn't wearing pants for some reason. Diane heard the piercing screams of the women and children's cries and jumped out of the car to try to help. She decided to get her tranquilizer gun. The woman quickly rushed to her back seat to get it, but she never managed to do it. Someone heavy fell on her from behind grabbed her by the hair and squeezed her neck. What do you think you're doing? Diane heard a coarse male voice. Then she heard a wolf howl, which seemed to be getting closer. Suddenly the woman felt a jolt and heard the distinct growling of an animal. Alex's father screamed in pain and fell off the woman. Diane turned around and saw the bloody muzzle of the she-wolf in front of her. It was the same animal, she was sure. The predator leaned over her face and licked her cheek several times. No one knows what would have happened to Diane and the two women if not for the she-wolf. 
One day, Diane helped the animal and her pups, and now the predator returned the favor, having saved Diane's life. Alex's father couldn't be saved. The she-wolf bit his throat, so he died on the spot. Alex's mother and wife were infinitely grateful to Diane. They said that if it weren't for her, something horrible would have happened. Alex's family sold all their property and moved away, and Diane continued to work as a vet to help animals. She was well known far beyond her village. Miracles were said to be happening at her house. They said that during the full moon, a huge she-wolf came to her house, whined under the doors, and when the fragile woman came out, they went together into the forest. <laughs> 